going to do Dr. Massey's version of the alveoli, okay, which might be different than everyone else's version in the world, but so be it. This begins where the bronchial tree ends. If one, if one of you would be so kind, bring that colorful bronchial tree over for us, okay? Where this model ends, okay, meaning right there where it ends, this model begins, okay? That's for another story for another day. So this contains all of our bronchioles, bronchioles. Now, yes, I see that there's cartilage here, and that's where the arguments come in, like, well, there's cartilage, it must not be a bronchiole, and that is true. But if we try to find all of our parts, we have to start with this being our bronchiole, all right? The branches that come off of bronchiole are always terminal bronchioles. So there'd be one, two, and another one probably going down, one, two, and three. And then the branches that come off of the terminal would be the respiratory. So these smaller ones here, one, there's one in the back, there's one over here, those are respiratory bronchioles. The branches that come off of the respiratory bronchioles would be the alveolar ducts. So alveolar ducts run through each of the alveolar sacs. So this is an alveolar sac, meaning a cluster of alveoli. This is an alveolar sac. Sac, 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 sac. Each alveolar sac, they cut one open here, is supplied, the air to each of the alveoli is supplied by an alveolar duct that runs down the center and they've cut it open here to say there's the opening to the alveolar duct. And that's gonna travel up through here and it's gonna end somewhere over here as it attaches itself to the respiratory bronchial, to the terminal bronchial, to the bronchial. And this attaches to a smaller bronchi. So up here would be a smaller bronchi, right? Which brings us into the bronchial tree. Okay, so that's our passageways. It makes sense, it works for us, it's all good. If you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Right. Now, a couple of other things about this model. Right? Here you see some of the alveoli cut open. Right? Each one of these air sacs, not sacs, but one of these air pockets is an alveoli, an alveolus. See these little red dots around it? These red dots that are around it are different than the red stuff here. Again, for our purposes, every alveolus is wrapped in elastic protein fibers. Elastic protein fibers. That represents the elastic protein fibers wrapped around the alveolus. All right, I mean, here. You see the alveoli wrapped in elastic protein fibers? This is different than this, right? You all agree that this is capillaries and these are elastic protein fibers. Those protein fibers are what help when you fill the alveolus with air, those elastic rubber bands allow it to return to its normal size, forcing some of the air out. That's a good thing. So here, elastic protein fibers. Over here in red and blue, these are the capillaries. Every alveolus has to be covered in a capillary bed because what is the purpose of the alveolus? the exchange of oxygen. Bring oxygen in, move the oxygen from inside the alveolus into the blood. So we know that deoxygenated blood arrives to the lung. So which one of these big vessels is deoxygenated? The blue one. Where is this vessel coming from? The heart. So this is our pulmonary artery. artery bringing deoxygenated blood to the lung. So here, comes in deoxygenated, gas exchange, it oxygenates, turns red, and then it's gonna leave and go back to the heart. And it's gonna leave via the pulmonary vein. vein. Back to the heart, there's your pulmonary circuit, all right? Now there are other vessels on here. They're very, very hard to see. Gonna get a little close up there. Here on the back of what we're calling the bronchiole, there's a little pink thing. 
and then some blue things. These are the bronchial arteries in pink and the bronchial veins in blue. This is different than these. It's opposite in its coloration, and these are separate structures from these. What these are, these are branches off of the aorta that are part of the systemic circulation, meaning when the oxygenated blood leaves the heart and goes through the aorta, oxygenated blood via the bronchial artery comes and feeds all the living cells of the lung. And then the cells take their nutrients and oxygen, and the deoxygenated blood leaves via the bronchial vein back to the vena cava. So there's two sets of vessels, the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Right, the bronchial artery and vein, and the pulmonary artery and vein. Right. Two things going on. Last but not least, there's always some confusion about what the heck is going on here. What's going on here is that you can see the covering of the lung. The covering, you can see it because these are simple squamous epithelial cells. That's the pleura. That's the visceral pleura, as far as I'm concerned. Visceral pleura, the covering of the lung. Now, what's always underneath epithelium? Loose areola. So I'm calling this next two layers, where you see blue dots and red dots, this is the loose areola tissue that supports the epithelium. And in it, you see red dots and blue dots. What are the red dots and blue dots? Arteries and veins, capillary beds. Right, arteries, veins, capillary beds in the loose areola. That's the point of loose areola. Loose areola is a space to put arteries, veins, lymphatics, nerves into. Well, that's what I'm calling that. And then you come to your sac. They talk about, I think, an interlobular septum. Right, interlobular septum, meaning a piece of tissue wall that kind of separates a group of sacs from the next group, if we would try to find that on our model, I would say it's here. Interlobular septum separating this section. Here's where it ends, another interlobular septum separating from the next section. That's probably the best we can do with that. Okay, just wanna point out here, that's a giant hexagonal bolt. Okay. <laughs>